I'm Dr. Alan Gavick, and we're back today with a special guest, Dr. Alex Thermos. Thank you, Alan. Welcome, Alex. It's good to have you back. We spoke a while back about misconceptions that not only physicians have regarding stem cells, but also that patients have regarding stem cells. Could you speak a little bit about the patient misconceptions that you see in your clinic at Genesis Stem Cell Therapy Clinic? Sure. Uh, one of the very first misconceptions that uh, patients come in with is this is going to be a silver bullet for their disease process along the way. And I'd like to say that there isn't a single silver bullet for any disease process that exists on the planet at this point in time. There's, it's usually a, a synergistic uh, number of components and also just helping restore, restore the patient's normal physiology uh, take place. And that's what stem cells do, is they help restore normal physiology during the process and then can encourage the localized tissues in order to regenerate and revitalize themselves. How about the physician community? Uh, sometimes we'll hear, well, this is from an embryo, right? This, we're destroying an embryo, taking a human life in order to get these stem cells. Can you address that? Well, there's, yeah, that comes up quite a bit as well. Uh, there are the autologous or the self-generated stem cells. And right. let's say we know where those are, come from, whether they're harvested from a patient's bone marrow or they're taken out of the patient's fat. Um, and then there's the allogeneic stem cells, right. which come from another source. And, and those stem cells are coming from like an umbilical cord, uh, for example, and, uh, and are, are grown and then administered to the patients. With the stem cell therapy that we do, never, ever, ever is there a baby harmed in the process. Uh, these all come from umbilical cords of live birthed babies along the way. And so uh, we're just taking that and, and taking a, a gift that we got from our Heavenly Father and extending that further in order to help uh, bring patients to better health along the way. I see the phrase at the bottom of some of the literature that says, these cells are derived from a live, healthy birth baby. Yes. I mean, and that is a, a message that Absolutely. we definitely want to get across. Ab Absolutely, that's, that's the case. Uh, because we're trying to help restore quality of life amongst uh, the patients that we treat and not taking a life in the process. Correct. Dr. Thermos, one of the other things that we've been talking about lately is patients' perception, even some physicians' perception, that stem cells can cause the proliferation of a cancer. Can you address that? Well, stem cells, if a patient has a pre-existing cancer, in their bodies at the time, uh, and we administer stem cells, that indeed could be a problem. But the stem cells themselves are not going to cause a cancer in a patient, and I think that's the biggest consideration along the way, is to make sure that patients understand that by doing stem cell therapy, they are not going to induce a cancer to form in their bodies and put themselves at risk. And it, it's further than what we're having in this discussion, but the reality is there are therapies with stem cells that can help in the treatment of some cancers. Is that not true? That's absolutely true. When we're doing things with multiplying the immune system and using the immune system, the patient's own immune system to deliver back to them so that they can indeed help fight the cancer. Well, I think at another time, we'll take the advantage to have that discussion with you on exactly how stem cells can be used in the treatment of immunotherapy. Great, sounds great.